Hey guys, welcome to episode number two about Punkin. Punkin, the archtop guitar. Punkin. Why did we call it Punkin? Well, we called it Punkin because it's certainly bulging, but not strapping anyway. Not sure what that was. Take that one home to wherever you need to take it. Listen, you'll remember in episode one, I told you about Ocello sponges. Not any other kind, Ocello. And I told you about these soap dishes with the quaint geometric pattern on the top and drilling them like an assembly line and get rid of, getting rid of the chafe with a piece of sandpaper and then putting the sponge in and putting it in a guitar case that you don't care much about and rehydrating, rehydrating, notice the air quotes thing, the guitar. So we put pumpkin in a case, not only for the recommended couple of days, like I told you, but we actually extended the period to a couple of weeks. Let's look at the results. Um, not only did I put one of these said homemade rehydration devices, not two, but actually three, don't count the thumb, three of these devices. And you know what I got? Well, I got the same thing from using three of these devices as you all will get from me for Christmas and that my friends is absolutely nothing count them one uh, two and remember the Titanic pool the deep one three now the sponges are a little bit well they have less water how do I know because I weigh them before and it's way over there, A-F-T-A, AFTA, that's right. So, what happened? Well, let's take it out of the case. Yeah, it's still bulging. But, what I do see is I do see that there is a case dropping to the floor right about now. There we go. I do see that it appears that some of this is a different color. So I think some of the water is working. But the bottom line here is that I am going to have to take this body off, or the back of this guitar off, and we're going to have to try another way. And that involves steam. Now, I've told you before, do not take the back of the guitar off and try to put the neck off, put the neck off, take the neck off or put it back on. Now I showed you uh, how to do one in an episode where I put a brace in here from the head block to the tail block to make the guitar think that it had a back on. I'll give you that right up there right about now. But I watch people reset necks and they don't get it. If the back is not solid, what ends up happening is when you go to glue the neck back on, you have the neck where you want it. Any pitch right here, any give right here, this way or this way, is going to result in the neck moving down or up. And this much here can turn into this much here, take that to the bank. So what we're going to do now, as I've told you in the last episode, that we're going to make a form where we're going to be able to straighten this out and fix it separated from the body. So we're going to take the strings off and we're going to pull the neck now. I am going to film simultaneously or concurrently, like most prison sentences are nowadays, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we are going 
to solve a little dilemma about, we're going to call this episode, Coffee, Tea, or Me. That'll be up there. If you don't see it up there, it hasn't been made yet. You just be patient. But in the world of DIY steamers, there is a difference, and I'm going to show you what that is. So let me get set up. We are going to steam the neck off. I will put this under the autopsy cam and kind of run you through this. I have done numeri, numeri, plural, not marriages, just episodes, pluri, episodes of pulling necks and neck jigs, and, and, and you'll go up there and see that playlist and see the jig that um, I made, and uh, you'll make one too. Okay, I got a patent on Chick Flick Teal though. Watch yourself. So, let's quit chattering. I'll quit chattering if you quit listening and let's go to the bench and get the neck off this thing, shall we? Okay, if you missed the first episode, this is a Harmony H1214 from 1962. The steel reinforced neck, the next best thing to a truss rod or nothing let's get this in here and let's meet the cast of this evening's performance first we have the hobo hot plate next it's companion granny's iron we put granny's iron on the fretboard up here to heat up a fret because we're going to have to remove a fret. We have a drill and a couple other things, a fret puller, and we have a big decision to make. Are we going to use the little teapot that's short but certainly not stout, or are we going to use the show great respect for Mr. Coffee? steamer so that's what we're gonna do we got the uh surgery scraparatus table set up right over there where you can't see it it's beautiful um but we're gonna take this thing right here Ooh, ah uh, do not covet this look at that and we're gonna take the strings off and we're gonna put this bridge and some other things parts we're gonna pull off into the canvas bag so we don't lose parts. When you lose parts off of a guitar like Pumpkin, you take the value from $8 down to four. So just remember that. Be right back. All right, there we go. Strings are there. We'll put a piece of tape on this side because that's where the base side is. So I always do that. We'll have blue for base. And then put it in the bag. And yeah, there's some fancy strings on here for uh, for what I don't know, but so we'll, we'll get them wound up and get them in the bag too. Now, if I were at a rodeo, I'll be throwing my hands up right now. And I'd be the winner. Okay, guys, a couple things I want to show you. This is the edge of the top of the body of the guitar. This is called the soundboard or the top. Underneath here is a piece of wood that's been used to elevate the fingerboard. I want to turn this up and show you what I'm talking about here because sometimes it's a set. It's an indicator of a neck reset that has happened already. Do you see what I see? There's a piece of wood right there that's underneath the fretboard, but really isn't part of the neck. It's been added in. So what happens here is there is a pocket that's V-shaped that is right in this area. Now, it's not at the edge here, 
and it's certainly not typically back into here so much. Hopefully, it is underneath one of these frets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up these frets because if there's glue or even if there's not glue, the frets will expand and pulling them out will be easier. Now, when you're pulling frets, sometimes because there's tangs on the underside of the fret, it will want to chip out the fingerboard because there are slots cut in here. So you want to take your time. This is where Granny's iron comes in at. We want to put that on the frets here. Now I want to tell you, if you have binding on a guitar right here on the sides, you don't want to use this method because it will melt the binding. You don't want to do that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to let that heat up a little bit and we are going to use our fret pliers. Now you'll see here that I don't know, let me put this underneath it so you can see a little bit better. So you'll notice that these are like pincers on an insect, probably insect order coleoptera would be the closest. Anyway, this comes up, and so when you squeeze this, it actually tries to push the fret up. In other words, pull it out. Now there are some shims you can put underneath that I'll show you while we're doing this. So once you get this started, you're not trying to cut the fret, you're just simply squeezing it and getting some space as you go, which pulls the fret up and loosens it up and the heat will help you with that. Okay, so let's get some contrast here so we can see what's going on. Um, when it comes to these um, fret pliers, fret pulling, pliers don't use these for anything else they're like your fret wire cutters you don't want to do anything else with them um, these are preci precision instruments so here's those spacers i was talking about ten thousandths twenty thousandths now you know what i think about that in the metric system but oh well anyway you start off with the thinnest one which is ten and when you start pulling the fret up once that comes up a little bit, you'll be able to slip that under there and it will straddle easy the fret, which gives you this much more leverage to keep working this. Okay, so we're going to heat this up a little bit more, like so. And then what I've got is I've got this drill set up with this bit. And I am going to drill, it's a very small bit, I'm going to drill down along the fret groove where we've pulled the fret, trying to find the pocket where this all fits together, where this neck dovetail joint comes together. So, this is heated up a little bit. I think we're going to try right there first so I just take this I'm not trying to cut anything I'm just going along and I'm working this very slowly like so and you can hear it start to come up now if you go to yanking on this too much that tang material that I'm talking about is going to tear out the fret slot you're going to have to put a fret back in here and you really don't want to put a fret job into this. Now that has come up a little bit and the, the reason you can tell is I can take this now and look that slides in under that. You see that? Like so. So I can come over here and that ten thousandths is going to give me a little bit more like so. I'm going to work this really careful. Don't deform the fret wire if you don't have to. You may be able to use it again. Okay, look, that popped right out. And it still has its radius. And the top of it isn't mashed anywhere. And right there 
is what we're after now. I can take a piece of steel wool or a razor blade, whichever one I have lying around, and get rid of, see there's tape on this razor blade, so I can use it to pick one area out, and I can just scrape those and get them smooth rather than leaving them sit there while I'm doing other things because if they're sitting there and they're popping up you're more likely to chip this off this is just some type of veneer layer I would suspect given the low price of this guitar now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drill bit I'm going to go in about right here and I'm going to drill and see if I can't find a spot where there's an airspace in here. I'm hoping it's not in the middle. Sometimes they're there. That's kind of a hassle. But let's see what we can find. Okay, so I've heated this up for a minute or two and watch what happens. You walk this in like so, and this just, you just work it back and forth, and it just cuts into that glue. It heats up. This is why hide glue is really good. We come in on this side. Oh, now that's melting like butter, and you just walk it down like this. Notice that I have this tape on here, so I'm not... You might be asking yourself, where do you get these pallet knives? Well, you get them at an artist supply store, um, and they come in all different sizes, um, wide, and maybe there's a, a little narrower one right over here in this area. Anyway, once you get this starting up, the bigger one is heated up. And it starts walking in there pretty good. You don't want to force this too much, especially on this guitar that is all dehydrated. But once, once you've done a few of these, it almost feels like I'm hitting something right there. We'll know here in a minute. It's coming out of both holes here. That means everything is starting to loosen up. I would have rather had it back a fret or two, but that's okay. Now we are going to take my neck pulling jig, which I showed you how to make one in another episode, cork line paper, etc. I'm going to give you a link to that right up there right about now. Let me get this thing put on this guitar now and see what happens. So first thing, the bottom has a bolt with a handle on it that will push up against the heel of the neck. So we want to set that down. We want to put this, let's flip this around and see if we can get this where you can see it like so. Before we get going here, there are thread protectors, wing nuts, bolts, and tubing to keep the side of the guitar nice so we're going to wind these down because it's a pretty thick arch top we want to remember it is an arch top and the top of this thing is flat you see that so we're going to be tensioning up here and not so much back here because if you push down on this whole thing flat you're going to end up crushing the top so we'll actually put a rag back here to buffer this but now it's time to put this up here and we want to make sure that that bolt is sitting right under the heel of the guitar like so and then we just simply put the top on and put these on and Start applying gentle pressure relentlessly. Let me get this on here. Okay, let's see. There we go. We have the T-handle 
right underneath the heel and we are just going to crank the steam back up and let this thing cook a little bit since the holes are in there we can move it around a little bit and we start to see things loosening up yeah it's steaming now see there again guys the steam is terrible I told a story about how I almost got burned in a drilling rig okay it's starting to come out the side of the heel of the neck you're going to be nice and careful with this Okay guys, it's time for this magic moment. Let's kill the steam here. Get this thing out of here. There we go. We'll hold on to everything here. There we go. Oh, you don't see that very often. Yup. It was right at the edge right here. It wasn't back but half a fret. It would have been right where that fret marker is. That's okay. We're going to drill these out. We're going to make sure that this thing is stable. This has started to swell up a little bit, but we're going to make sure that these are all filled with rod after everything is, or doweling, not Kevin doweling fitness hour, but regular doweling. And then we're going to let this dry out a little bit. Now that this top is off, we can safely pull off the back. All right, guys, let's take a quick look here. The soundboard, the top of the soundboard, the body there, has broken loose and has warped out. And also, I want you to notice, look at this pinkish, whitish looking. That is not hide goose. So somebody's been after this before. So while this is uh, still moist on the top, I am going to clamp this down. I was just going to pull the back off of it right now and, and get this ready where I can fix that brace in here. We'll have a look at that. But the first thing I want to do is put a couple clamps on this and a piece of wood across here so this settles back into itself. Okay, guys, I think this is a good place to end uh, this section of this project. We've got the um, soundboard or the top is laying flat on top of the front block, which is good. The neck came off nice and clean, but that pinky whitish glue there just tells me something that somebody has been here before. Um, I don't know how many or, or who. So I guess this guitar, we might as well call it a divorcee. Now, one of the things that you want to know uh, when you go into this stuff, when you see these $200 guitars and $100 guitars, you just saw what can happen. What was really going on there was the top had cut loose, the soundboard had cut loose from the head block, so injecting steam in there was giving us blow out in the inside of the body and all that kind of thing and so um, two big takeaways if you're dealing with a Harmony H1214 your back of pocket where you need to inject the steam is about that far and it's actually just before the 15th fret 
three quarters away from the 14th fret to the 15th fret. That's not a place you want to drill into the fingerboard. So there's going to be a lot of work there to fix that and make it. Once you inject steam into a fingerboard, you need to leave it sit. You don't want that many holes. So we, we kind of just made Swiss cheese out of that one. Next thing is if you don't have the right tools, I mean, if you go buy one of these, they're almost $200. I've shown you how to make one. You need a couple pieces of board. You need a bolt with a T-handle. Um, you got to be able to cut with a jigsaw, and you need some cork paper that you can find to line shelves with in a kitchen. But you need some, some stuff like that. And then you got to decide whether you want to use the old teapot or, or you want to come in with the... Uh, the Mr. Coffee thing here because you got to be able to steam. Once you're done, oh, don't forget Granny's iron. Once you're done, you got to know that when you buy one of these guitars and you throw the hundred bucks out the window, you might be just going, you know what, I'm going to try this, I'm going to build this stuff, and I'm going to see what I can do. But don't expect the result that you're going to put a, a a guitar out there that's worth five or six hundred dollars because anybody that knows these things is going to look at it and say it probably wasn't worth that to begin with they were cheap guitars to begin with and after we've messed with them um, yeah so what you saw tonight nothing new I've been where someone was somebody gave up on this project after they give it their best shot and was smart enough <laughs> to get out before they got into all this stuff, I'm just not that smart. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to stabilize itself here, up here. And then I'm going to pop the back off. We can expect similar problems from the glue being the way it is and whatever was used. But we got to get that brace that's tied on in two spots but cut loose in another. And then we're going to figure out how to take this and restore it back to some semblance of its arch shape. And then once we go there, yeah, what you saw up here is what you see here. It's kind of magnified throughout the body. Anyway, stay tuned. Next time we're going to take the back off. We're going to look at the inside. We're going to brace it up. We're going to do whatever we need to do. Um, We'll probably end up going down the Galliano junk pile path if you haven't seen that episode. I swear that guitar is with Nat Myers in Kentucky right now. You're going to see him playing on it. He is so great, uh, authentic, uh, late 30s and early 40s blues. But if you want to see just about anything that can be wrong with an archtop guitar, watch that playlist. Hey, thanks for hanging in here. I hope you're learning something, <laughs> number one leave me to buy up all these things while you save your money. And that said, I will see you next time.